Hello, morphemes, phonemes, and graphemes. Welcome back to her. After two weeks, it has made its return. And within the coming year, I should be streaming this slightly more often than last. So, let's see. Last time, we did these two example sentences. Uh, the plate in my hand hurts. And the sun ate the traveler. And this time, uh, we are going to work on locational structures. So these things up in front of, behind of, next to, to the right of, so on and so forth. Which I can't remember why I realized I needed to work on them. All I remember is that I need body parts because we did body parts yesterday. That's why I needed to work on them. If you hear my dog whining in the other room, I apologize. She is very upset at me. Zobies! Shh! So let's see now. So we have the word for in front of is the same as chest, and the behind of is the back. And I was actually thinking of expanding upon this body to locational metaphor with having arm be the word for next to beside which I think makes sense. It does mean there'll be some lexical ambiguity with like saying something next to Jack versus Jack's arm. But I think context should be sufficient enough to clear that up. But before we continue with thinking up of words, we need to figure out which words we need to think up of words for. That's a tongue twister. So, in front of, behind of, next to, beside, uh, right of, left of, above, below. I think we can also make above, on, next to, beside, on, hanging, vertical, surface, as opposed to a horizontal one like uh, above slash on would be be uh, next to uh, between inside inside of outside of I think I think that is everything we need to keep track of is the Stream quality really low. Are people able to see the examples on screen or is... Why is the quality so low on my thing? One sec, I'm going to see if I can... Okay, so you guys can see it. 
just fine. Just a little, just a little thing in my screen is not high resolution for some reason. So let's see. So all of these, but how is that big? There we go. Uh, so now gotta actually think up of words to use. Hmm. Right of, left of, above, below. I could have above on the head. Keeping with this um, fontar, keeping with this body parts motif we've got going. And then below could be ki la at the legs of, at the feet of. Is it lazy? Eh, arguable. Is it realistic? Quite so. Hello, Fieldling639. You are s you are so close to greatness there, Fieldling. And hello to you too, Prince the Rottweiler. Do you want to be referred to as Prince or Rottweiler? Rottweiler. I'm going to call you Prince. Rottweiler is a hard word to say. Welcome to the stream. Uh, fa, fa, fanta. Goes down here. Uh, lad. So in case you don't know, currently continuing to make more phrases for locativity, allocative placement words. And seeing as how we already have a body motif going on, I just had to expand upon that with front being chest, ba uh, behind being back, just like in English. Uh, mar uh, next to being the arms, since they're next to you. Above being head and below being the um, legs. So let's see, right of, left of, I'm going to have to think up of actual words for, and I think, I think I'll have to th probably think of actual words. <laughs> J just remove the three, uh, no, it depends on if this, if your YouTube channel is a personal thing or a non post uh, business public thing. But yeah, 639, just seeing that three in there really messes with my brain. Uh, so on, between, inside of, outside of. So do we have a word f for hanging? No, we have a word for exchange, but we can make a word for hanging. Suda. Su. Da. Did I do the grammar yet? Well, I'm doing the grammar. Are you talking about the grammar document? If so, I've already transferred everything from 
this to this. So this is just, oh, so this page is now just for planning. But yeah, all the grammar we have so far should be in this document here. If you don't see something that should be here, feel free to let me know. Why are, is that out of... Feel free to let me know and I will take a look. What the... No idea why these are out of sync all of a sudden. Let me just fix that before I continue. Why are they all out of sync? I don't I didn't change anything, I don't think. And now now they're back to normal. Okay. <laughs> a very nice situation fieldling uh 639 found himself in with his username that's what okay so dictionary so the verb we got to hang sida and i think we have some nominalization, one who does diminutive nominalizer. We do not have a general general nominalizer suffix. We just have one for that. Uh, what are we doing tonight, boys? Well, after this, sleep. I'm going to sleep. Uh, but... For this thing, just uh, uh, locational words for the grammar. So, a nominalizer. What would be a good general nominalizer for? I think it'd be best if it was a suffix. I could do infix, but we already have, but we don't have many infixes in the language. And if you do infixes, you kind of have to go all in. So a suffix that goes to the end of this word to hang the hanging. I hope so. <laughs> School started already, so I need to sleep. Uh, why don't we make it? Huh? Huh? Uh, yeah, let's make it. Huh? Or if it's after a vowel, it creaks it. Except all words enter the vowel, so we can just creak it. Oh, but not some of them might end with a creak already. So, ye. Okay, if you've forgotten to sleep in the last 40 hours, get off the stream now and go take a nap. Uh, well, I usually use tabs to keep the words lined up. <laughs> Trust me, that's not this, this, all this is not normal. If you want to uh, look at the documents, there's a link in the description, but I am not nearly this organized. This is only because I want other people to see it. <laughs> So, sida, 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 
hanging what hangs hanging sign or nope nope uh picture hanging or picture And then there we go on a vertical surface. Uh, and then I need the laryngeal marker. Uh, I'll read the comments in a second once I figure all this out. Ba. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Why am I blanking? And then creek. Uh, where is my creaky A at? I want a non-nasalized creek. There we go. There we go. Uh, you start with... The, I do not generally start with the vocab first. Though sometimes... Sometimes I do. It depends on what my goal with the language is. If I'm trying to get a certain a certain style or rhythm, I might start with the vocab and then back construct from there. Like I kind of I'm kind of doing that with a conlang I'm making for a friend for his Pathfinder campaign where he has a bunch of names of fey creatures, a fey like Nyrissa, uh, Shula, Shuka, so on and so forth. And so I'm kind of back forming these names and making a language around that to an extent. But usually otherwise I do not start with vocab. I start with phonology. I start with making a plan of what I want the language to be like. I make phonology. I make do a bit of the grammar, and then I make vocab alongside the grammar, so I have things to use as an example, just for my own head. But if, if that answers your question, also feel free to keep the questions till the end of the stream, as I do have a portion of the stream where I answer people's various linguistics questions where while trying not to die in a video game. But if you have a question that really needs to be a uh, answered, feel free to ask. Uh, how does your body keep caffeine that long? That... I would just swear off caffeine altogether, man. That's that's something. Okay. And then between. Ooh, between is going to be an interesting case because between kind of implies multiple objects. Which means, yeah, so we're going to have to have, there's no plurality in the language. So if it's between just a singular object with the thing, it's going to imply plurality. Like between the chairs, let's just create a quick little dirty word for this. Teen. Teen. Yeah, okay, between. So, uh, do I have a word for chair? No. Uh, da, 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 what's a good? Between the trees. 
I highlighted tree, not. Whoops. Key. Key. Nah. So something like this between the trees. The plurality of the trees is implied as between by necessity requires multiple objects with it. But then if we wanted to say something like between the tree and the, where's a good word for this farm? Uh, between the tree and the building. So something like this between the tree and the farm. That looks pretty good. Yeah. And I know I said that was going to be a quick and dirty word, but I think I'll just keep that word. So. Did I already mention that if you wanted to see the documents, you can go in the description below the folder is there and you can just hop on and view the documents at your leisure also feel free to leave suggestions for anything in the language you can also do the same on the conlore conlang discord network i have a little section there in personal projects uh, yeah that that checks out waking up on time for anything early is hard yep can't increase it sorry uh so inside of, outside of, right of, left of. So. I could. No, I'm not going to do it the Japanese way. Uh, key, key. So just need, needing to make some quick and dirty words oh no problem uh, right of left of uh, nope that's the I was about to use a phonetic structure from my other conlang We weep up. Kiwi up. So, right of, left of, ra. So ra is already being used, it seems like, but it's part of om onomatopoeia. So I think I will use rapa. There we go. Just taking that uh, and then are there want to keep on top of my phonetic column and I 
think we can have we and ra be prefixes. No, no, not as in dirty words, as in quick, not clean, not elegant, just kind of placeholders. That is fascinating. However, we do have valency figured out as this language is a symmetrical, I think it's called, I always call it Austronesian alignment, but symmetrical alignment is what I think the official term is now, which you can actually see in the very first part of uh, the grammar document. So yeah, valency isn't too big of an issue at the moment. So prefixes. And then we can apply this to these words here. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. There we go. So we mar and Ramar, Ramar, Ramar. And then we lar, we lar, lar. Oh, that's hard to say. Ralar, Rala, Ra, 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 so valency is the number of arguments a verb may take. So generally you have, most verbs have one, have a valency of one or two. So uh, valency with one verb is known as intransitive and it's things like I sleep, I talk, I'm lying down. So you only have one argument, which is the subjects of the sentence. And then two, uh, valency, uh, a two, a verb with a higher degree of valency with two arguments is transitive and it has a subject and an object. So I see her, I'm walking the dog. I'm uh, eating cereal. And then there are operations used to increase and decrease valency accordingly. So making an intransitive verb transitive is what's known as causative. So um, And then making a transitive verb intransitive is the passivization of it. So we don't really have causative forms, though we do have constructions like I made her kill the man. But that's a transitive becoming dry transitive. It's there's so much going on. Hello, Frost. Nice to see you again. But the basics of it is valency is the number of arguments a verb can take and 
valency changing operations are change the valency of the verb or how many objects, how many arguments the verb may take. If that makes sense. If it doesn't, remind me right before or after I stream the Q&A session and I'll open up a little thing to, actually, you know what? Here. I am, I'm gonna finish with these. Right arm, left arm, and then I'll open up a thing to show you. Right hand, left hand, right leg, left leg, right foot, left foot. There we go. And then I'll come back in and add the IPA later-ish. And then before I do, no, I'll do inside and out of first. Uh, inside of wrong uh, document. Did I just? Why did that? Close. Please tell me that then at the stream or is the stream still going on? It is still live. I just closed the page holding the stream. I just closed the page holding the stream site by accident. Uh, okay. It's you a hand? Okay, anyway, I'm back. Sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> uh, oh, I should have guessed you, you were uh, German by your um, uh, name. Citron. Oh. It's so much easier with vulgar lang. I was planning on using it a while ago, but for some reason, I can't remember exactly why I was just turned away from the idea. Maybe because I, I've been doing this so long, I already have, I feel more in control when I have everything myself done. Keep the... So, actually, do we need specific words for inside of and outside of? Because they could just be prepositions. Do we have prep? I think we're prepositional. Do we have? We have done nothing with prepositions, it looks like. How did I miss that? That is... So I guess I gotta figure out if we're doing prepositions or postpositions. But I think... Okay, I'm gonna... Get rid of those. And then make a note in planning. Needs to be done. I think we'll go post position. Positions. Post positions, yeah. Uh, ooh. 
That sounds fascinating. I'll make a note of that. I'm going to look at that book. And then uh, I'm going to save your question, Prince, for the um, uh, Q&A section at the end. But real, real quick, I'm going to discuss uh, to Zoni Zitrone how what valency is. So valency is verbs that have a valency of one are known as intransitive and they can only take one argument. Let's increase these by like th 300. So, so valency of plus one, valency of plus two, and a valency of plus, plus three. So valency of plus one is transitive, two is transitive, and three is Thy transitive. So intransitive verbs, they only have the uh, the subject generally in like a language like English. Sometimes it might be the patient, but in English it's generally the subject or agent. So I sleep, he falls. Uh, so on and so forth. Transitive, I eat the apple, I walk, I kill the man. And I transitive will have a subject, object, and an indirect object. So I give the woman an apple. So yeah. Intransitive have a valency of one, transitive have a valency of two, subject and object, and ditransitive a valency of three, with the subject, the object being effective, and the recipient of the action. There's also uh, the uh, zero transitive verbs, which are also called um, impersonal verbs. In English, these take the dummy va uh, dummy pronoun it. So it rains, it snows, it's thundering. So all of these don't have, all of these verbs have no um, valency to them. So they take a dummy pronoun in English. And so what uh, Fieldling was saying, can there be more than three? Theoretically, yes, but I, I can't think up of any off the top of my head and I don't believe we have found any with more than three, but I'll, I'll look into that, but I don't believe there is more than three. Uh, one sec. And then what Fieldling was saying with valency changing is that these are operations that change the valency of the verb. So an engine, so a common one in English is the passive which is, I'm sure you might have heard of, you might even know how to use it, so it's not really well explained. But what it does is it promotes the object to the subject. So passivization, passivization, the apple is eaten, the man is killed. 
and so that's a transitive becoming intransitive and a ditransitive becoming uh, a ditransitive becoming intransitive would be the woman is given an apple and then that's the most common one in English what most people know but then there's also valency increasing so and this is usually referred to as a causative though there are multiple types of valency increasing there's also multiple types of passivization but I make him fall. So notice how fall now has two arguments. One the object, one the subject. Or I made him kill her. So here we see a transitive gaining valency and a trans intransitive gaining, gaining valency and a transitive gaining valency. Yes, a passive sentence usually used when you want to bring attention to the object itself or hide who did the action. And then causative is just showing, I made them do this. A lot of languages have formations for causative. English does it through phrasality like this with the verb make. But uh, German, du uh, sprichst Deutsch, uh, has a, a prefix actually. So, antworten, ich antworte, ich antworte, ich antworte, I answer, uh, ich be, be antworte, then, god damn it, this verb confuses me. Antworten. Yes. And then be be antworten. Be antworten die Frage. The B there is adding is a valency increasing operation. If that makes sense. It makes it so the verb that is otherwise unable to take an object can take an object. Has that shown, uh, answered uh, your question about valency? Obviously, there's a lot more to it, but that's a very good, uh, brief, simple synopsis of what it is. And if you don't have, I'll give you a minute for any other questions about valency while I get, um, uh, the Q and A session ready. Okay, let me get back to, nope, wrong. There we go.
sweet. I am glad I could be of help. And now it is time for the Q&A session where I answer any and all questions while playing, uh, trying not to die, die in this game. And I think I have a question reserved from Prince about how did I start out my YouTube career? Uh, would you like the long answer from back in high school a few years before I even posted my first video? Or the short answer from around the time of my first video? audio is louder than me. Okay, I will fix that. Okay, is that better? As Protondium loves to say, it wouldn't be a schwa stream if there isn't any audio issues. So, oh, did Prince... Did Prince leave? Because it's going to be hard to answer him in a QA and a session if he's not here. Or well, he might not have just heard me. But... Oh. Why is my thing behind? Okay. It's still louder. Okay, I made myself louder and I quieted the audio. Is that good? I can also options sound do that. Is that good? So as Prince is not uh, specifying, I will just give the long answer. So back around middle school, I developed migraine issues to the point where I was basically, for all of high school, I was, I was stuck at home unable to do anything, unable to go to school, so on and so forth, and a lot of that time I spent uh, watching stuff like Sh uh, SciShow, uh, Crash Course, Veritasium, uh, and all those educational YouTubers, key of which being uh, my, uh, linguistics YouTubers. So, Native Lang, uh, Zidnath, back when he still did linguistics and back before I actually started studying in school. And so doing that, I, fell, I then fell in love with linguistics and I wanted to uh, teach linguistics as then I wanted to help people learn it. It was a lot of fun to explain it. And so around the beginning of college, I decided to try making a YouTube channel. However, things got busy, I couldn't, then the pandemic happened. And then I think the first year after the pandemic, I posted, yeah, the first summer after the pandemic, I posted a YouTube short making a stupid little pun about Flemish and a cough, which is a like one of three shorts I have. That went nowhere, and then seven months later, I finally found time to make my first video. 
And that is how I got started on YouTube. Damn it, I failed. Chat is really quiet when Protondium and Cat are both not here. Any other questions that you can give me? So I can mess up and die. I um, I wouldn't say managed school. I barely passed high school because of my migraines, and then I found a medication that works for me for my around the time college started, and then I took a gap year after the pandemic like not immediately after the pandemic and then that's when I started making YouTube videos please do uh But yeah, after my migraines disappeared, I've been able to attend college with a 3.65 total GPA. So, I think I'm doing quite well. Yeah, I think Prince left. <laughs> Goodbye, my Prince. Ah. Got the Got the healing uh, modifier so I can heal if I'm going fast enough. Look at that. There we go. Ow. So, uh, uh, Zoni, if you are new to linguistics, feel free to ask more questions about anything linguistics related, as I am a linguistics channel. Well, aside from this little Q&A session, all my gaming stuff is usually on my second channel. Oh, shit. Yeah, they... They suck. Have you been able to try any medications for it? That's usually, unfortunately, the best way to deal with migraines is through dedicated medications.
Wait, I just completely glossed over that. Um, That's, mm, yeah, that's not great. If possible, and I think this would be easier in, if you're in Germany than if you're in the US, try to find a neurologist that can give um, more permanent daily or weekly uh, medications or figure out a combination of like maybe foods that might increase your chances or situations that might increase your chances of migraines like for me my migraines only really started getting better once I found a medication that works for me that's that's a new one I haven't heard anyone migraines getting better with wisdom teeth getting pulled out I have, I do know some people who got piercings in their inner ear that helped as it relieved pressure somewhat, but yeah. But there, there are ways to combat it. And even if you can't go to school, doesn't mean you can't learn or do nothing. School isn't the and all be all of life. How much health does this thing have? Ow. Uh, chaos. Ooh, that's not I deal. Actually, no, I have heard of someone who got teeth removed and their head pain got better. A, a old friend of mine who had also had a very small mouth. Something I find annoying about my migraines is I when I was first diagnosed I was quite young, just starting puberty, and the cons consensus at that time was that migraines for men that start during puberty last until puberty is done. And unfortunately for women, it's longer with migraines lasting until well after menopause when all the hormonal shifts are done happening. But, so I was told, okay, your migraines, they're starting at 13, they're pretty bad, but they could be done by the age of 16. 16 comes around. Okay, your migraines might be done by the age of 18. 18 comes around, still nothing. And then the fact that, until recently, there's no... No dedicated medication for migraines. As... 
all medication we know that works for migraines, or most of it until quite recently, were side effects of certain things. So I was taking antidepressants, I was taking anxiety meds, I was taking Botox, if you can believe it. Botox, which actually does help migraines, was relieving me of migraines. Ye, it is a little bit different, though, for I, unfortunately, have probably have chronic lifelong migraines because of uh, traumatic brain damage from younger. Thank you, car. But yeah, most a lot of migraines start with hormones. But it's only recently that they developed. This is new. Oh no. Oh no. There's a mimic here. Okay, let's see. Kick this down. In this. Yeah. Luckily for us, they have increased the number of medications specifically for migraines in the past few years. I think there's like four or five of them now. Ooh. I knew it! Okay, and that is the end of that. So, if there are any more questions, say them now, or wait until the next stream, which should be Friday or Sunday. No, it should be Friday, which will be happening on the second channel. So, subscribe to that if you don't want to miss it. I'll wait a tiny bit longer for uh, questions, if anyone has any more, about languages in general or conlangs, uh, migraines. If not, uh, let's just get rid of that. So seeing as how I'm not noticing any new questions, or hopefully the delay isn't that bad, I will and this here, next time we'll work on post positions and maybe translate a few more sentences. Uh, next time I do her. And till then, I bid you all adieu.